the single most important lesson that you have to learn in life is this, how to love like Jesus. Learning to love like God loves you. The whole reason God puts you on this planet is not to make money, not to retire, not to just have a lot of fun and die. God puts you here on this planet to learn how to love. And if you don't do that, you miss the point of life. He puts you here to learn how to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And if you don't learn that, You've just missed it. The most important thing in life is to live a life of love. But how do I know that that's what's most important? Because in my life, I've got a lot of important things. Well, I'm glad you asked that question because there's a little story in scripture. It's about five verses that gives us the key to the Christian life. And here's what happened. This is in the New Testament. There was a teacher of the law that came up to Jesus and he had an opportunity to ask Jesus a question. I, I know I have a ton of questions and I'm sure you would as well, but let's just suppose for a moment you had one shot and one question to ask Jesus. What would you ask him? Now, I, didn't, I wouldn't have asked this question, but I'm so glad this guy was here and he asked the question that he did because he basically said this to Jesus. Jesus, would you please tell me what is the most important thing? In life. And here's how Jesus answered, Mark 12. Jesus responded this way, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. There are no commandments more important than these. Jesus is saying, hey, look, there's, a, there's one thing that's important in life. It's this, right? Ready? Here it is. It's to love me and it's to love others. And there's a third part too, and this is hard for some of us, and that is to learn to love yourself because God thinks you're amazing. He said, this is what's most important in life is loving me and loving others. Another passage in the New Testament, Jesus goes on to, to add this to it in John 13. He says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment, a new one. Love each other just as I have loved you and you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You know, Jesus always had time for people, always. If we're too busy, you know what we lose? Our sensitivity. You can be right in the midst of somebody that's hurting really bad, and you're in such a hurry that you don't even realize that God has put you in a position to have an opportunity to be a blessing to someone by maybe just cheering them up or saying, you know, God loves you or, you know, God wants you to know that you're precious to him. Jesus didn't miss opportunities. He was going somewhere, but he always had time to stop and help hurting people. We need to make sure that we notice the people around us that are hurting and we take the time to do something to make their life better. You know, some of the reasons that we're so driven and we get burnout, and I've been on the verge of burnout a number of times in my life, or while we walk around feeling so empty inside, or we have loneliness or the regrets, is because we're using the wrong measuring stick for when it comes to what success really, truly looks like. So what does that mean exactly? What well, means when you wake up in the morning, you make a decision, and the decision is this, no matter what happens today, no matter what my to-do lists are or how good or bad a day it is, it doesn't matter. As long as I learn to love God a little bit more and I learn to love others, then that day was a great day. The Bible says that day was the best day. Now the opposite is true as well, which is if you wake up in the morning and you're not even thinking about God, and you say, I gotta, I gotta get going, man. I gotta get out there. I gotta make the sale. I gotta make the grade. Let's say for you, it was the best day ever. Maybe you got the promotion. Maybe you did get the sale. It was the best day for you. And it's not that all those things were bad or wrong. They're good. But let's say you didn't learn to love God a little bit more or learn to love others or even understand to learn how much he really loves you. Then God says, you know what? That wasn't the best day. That was an okay day. It was a mediocre day. And the fact that I've got something better for you. You know, when we derail our lives and all of us, all of us derail our lives at one point or another, all of us get our priorities mixed up and, and twisted around upside down. God doesn't look at you in anger, upset. He looks at you with compassion. And he says, okay, that's all right. It's okay. We'll try it again tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll get another shot at it because this is important to me. That this is what God says. This is important to me that you get this right. And so, yeah, all these things were great, but I've got a better way for you to live. 
And that's the heart of God towards you. He wants to give you the best day ever. And he wants to have a better way for you to live. And that's to live a life of love. Look at 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Everything you do must be done in love. Everything. So the primary call in the life of a believer is to live a life of love. It's putting relationships before activities, not just building wealth, not getting to the best schools, not getting married, not landing the best jobs, nothing wrong with all that, but it's not the priority. It's not what's important. And God says, let love be your highest priority. Make life about relationships, not about accomplishments. Loving like God is taking care of people who can't take care of you. Can't give you anything back at that point. God is patient with you. The Bible says that we are but dust and God knows that. And that we struggle and he is patient with us. God is kind to you. He loves you. God does not envy. God does not boast. God is not proud. Unless he's talking about you. He thinks you're pretty amazing. God does not dishonor others. God is not self-seeking. God is not easily angered with you. God keeps no records of wrongs because Jesus paid for all of it on the cross. God does not delight in evil or the evil that happens to you. God rejoices with the truth. God always protects you even when you may not realize it. God always trusts. God always hopes because he is hope. God always perseveres, and God never fails you. That's who God is, and that's who God wants you to, to understand about him. This is his heart towards you. When he looks at you, this is how he looks at you. When he thinks about you, this is how he thinks about you. He wants to relate to you in this way. He wants you to know this is how he responds to you. So the next time you go around thinking and getting down on yourself that maybe God is punishing you or that God is upset at you or that God doesn't like you or that God, for some reason, he's out to get you, think about this passage as a filter to understand and to see who God is to you. God is patient and kind and loving and he will never, ever, ever fail you. And he loves you with an everlasting, never-ending love. This is his heart towards you. And so how do you spell love? What is the way we do that? We've heard this many times, you spell love time. You show people time, but it's even more than that. It's time and commitments. It's time plus commitment is how we show people love and it communicates love. The most important relationship in your life, the Bible says, is your relationship with God. Working on your friendship with him, listening to him, talking to him, letting him talk to you, Letting him love on you. It's making that commitment to be with him on a regular basis. And then the second most important relationships we have that we need to have time and commitment for is for people. You know, I've, as a pastor, I've, I've done a lot of memorials and I've been to a lot of memorials as well. And I hear all kinds of testimonies. It's one of the, the best parts about a memorial is hearing about a person's life. But let me tell you something I've never heard. Never once have I ever heard this kind of testimony at a memorial. He was so amazing at his to-do lists. I've never heard that before because that's not what matters. What I've heard though is how this person impacted their life through relationships, how this person impacted their life because they gave of themselves, they gave of time and they kept their commitments. Attention is the greatest gift you ever give anybody. Why? Because your attention is your life. When I give you my attention, I'm giving you my time, and my time is my life. I'm never gonna get that time back. I can always get more money. I can always get other things. I can't get any more time. And if I give you my time, I've just given you a part of my life. It's the most important thing you can give somebody. Type amen if you agree. Click here to watch this important message.